Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to give this talk about echocardiovascular surgery. Personally, I believe that the possibilities of ultrasound are underused in cardiovascular surgery because uh, there is a lot of possibilities uh, and the surgeon can do it himself, so he is free in his decision making and also in the imaging he wants to use. There is a number of issues in cardiovascular surgery and especially in stent-based cardiovascular surgery like visualization, instrumentation, implants, access and measurement. We have used ultrasound for a number of applications in the experimental setting like wall thickening measurements for uh, assessment of uh, cardiac function after assist or during assist, compliance measurements of the vascular uh, tree, stent flexibility, and of course in the clinical setting, EVAR, TVAR, and uh, stent valves. Uh, stent design in bioprosthesis is one application I believe is of interest. One question here is, uh, if you design a new stent for a catheter valve, is how flexible should the stent posts be? Should they be flexible or stiff? And how does nature look like? Uh, there was an interesting study made by one of our collaborators putting uh, ultrasonic crystals on the stent posts and pre pressurizing these valves with the crystals on the stent posts in a um, mock loop in order to measure what the stent posts do when, they are, uh, when the valve is under pressure. Dr. Kalais did this work and he found some interesting findings. So you see here a valve with uh, ultrasonic crystals. Uh, the whole thing has to be put under water and here we have an uh, endoscope for visualization. We measure the pressure and we have uh, a system to load the valve with different pressures and of course we can recuperate the overflow uh, here. This is a little bit small uh, in print but I think the interesting things here to see is the last column uh, which says increase in uh, radius in percent from diastole to systole and here you have all the valves that have been tested and the native aortic root and you can see here that if you pressurize um, from 0 uh, to 120 you have about 7 uh, percent difference in stent posts uh, radius and interestingly enough in the commercially used uh, valves we, you can find everything between almost nothing, completely stiff in the St. Jude Epic valve, for instance, to very flexible in the Edwards uh, CS valve. And all these valves have been implanted ten thousands of times and all are the best, as you know. So obviously there is no rule uh, of how the stand post should be designed. You can do what you want. It's always the best. Um, yeah, this is just summarizing the same because these were elder, most of these bioprosthesis were older ones and they showed uh, very reliable clinical results. Another interesting application is of course visualization with endovascular ultrasound. Uh, we have used uh, this technology for routine endovascular repair of abdominal and aortic aneurysms with uh, fluoroscopy on one side and the intervascular ultrasound on the other one without angiography and no contrast medium. Um, of course you use the fluoroscopy to see where the guide wires go. Here you can see uh, endoprosthesis uh, in the distal aortic arch and the descending aorta and usually what we do is we map the departures of the supraaortic vessels and mark them on the body with uh, some radiopac uh, um, markers and then we position the uh, stent graft close to the last supraortic vessel and release it there. It's also useful to analyze uh, target site. For instance, this is a um, patch aneurysm in a thoracoabdominal aortic aneurysm that was repaired open uh, and you can very well recognize with the intravascular ultrasound where the wall of the prosthesis is completely circumferential and where the patch is. And if this patch is not feeding an uh, important vessel, of course you can close this with a stent graft very easily. 
Uh, for valve stents, we have used uh, intravascular ultrasound and intracardiac ultrasound routinely in the experimental lab. We have done hundreds of uh, stent graft implantations, valve stent implantations in the design and development of uh, new valves. And one has to distinguish the different types of uh, ultrasound possibilities. So we have what is called intravascular ultrasound. Um, it produces a salami type slice uh, of the heart or the aorta, wherever you are. Then we have intracardiac echocardiography. It functions like TE, but the probe is usually in the cable axis or in the aorta, and it produces a pizza slice uh, type image like in TE. Here you have, for instance, uh, intravascular ultrasound showing uh, uh, stent graft in the aortic root, and I think you can recognize the stent here, you can recognize a leaflet here, and you can recognize the sinus uh, portion here. So you can see from inside much better than what we usually see from outside once the stent is there. Uh, technically speaking, intravascular ultrasound is either uh, generated by a rotating crystal or a circular array of a uh, multitude of crystals. Whereas for the, in, you know, here you have, for instance, a measurement um, of a descending thoracic aorta. Uh, there are now uh, computerized tools for automatic borderline detection and the diameter uh, measurement. So when you have a, a stock of endoprosthesis and you want to replace the, replace the descending aorta, you measure and you take from the shelf what you have to implant there. This uh, here is the probe and uh, these are of course the lumens and there is the vessel wall. Uh, as I said, uh, intracardiac echocardiography, Navigate for instance, Akunav Navigate, uh, we use it in the cava or in the descending thoracic aorta. It produces a slight image uh, and you can uh, tip the, uh, tilt the tip in different directions. It's based on an array of crystals and has uh, very good ex resolution to the tenth of the millimeter, like the other one also in the vascular setting. Uh, this is a TE, of course, measuring here or showing here a valve, which is very calcified. And of course, it's difficult to see the details sometimes. Um, here you have uh, intracardiac ultrasound uh, looking at the aorta in a pig, and I think you agree with me that you have excellent visualization of the aortic root, the valve leaflet, and you can see this in open and closed position, and you can also measure uh, with a caliper type 2.3 millimeters, uh, 2.3 centimeters, 23 millimeters, um, very easy procedure. Um, this is a intravascular ultrasound, which is introduced in axial fashion into a stent graft, with a valve inside, and you, here you can see the um, valve leaflets, the stent posts. Before the procedure, you can determine the level of the annulus. Here is the intravascular ultrasound probe. Uh, these uh, dots here represent four millimeters per division, but this can all be adjusted. You have a zoom function. And then you can see that we are here in the subaortic valve region. You can see the mitral. Uh, starting here on one side and on the other side you have already the muscle uh, of the septum. Again here you can measure with a caliper function 22.6 millimeters. As you know there sometimes there is a shoulder of muscle below the valve and uh, it's better to know how much this measures. Of course with T you can have uh, color Doppler, the same is available for intracardiac ultrasound and you can also measure gradients as you are used to do. This is again IVUS in a stent valve here where you can see the function of the valve leaflets. And here it's the open valve and uh, you may recognize here the stent, here the aorta, here the coronary sinus, uh, the, co the sinus valsalva I have to say, the aortic root, and here again stent posts and uh, space behind that allows for perfusion of the coronaries in this city. Um, we have developed a technology for uh, doing the uh, valve implantation, stent valve implantation in aortic position without uh, uh, angiography. 
relying on uh, fluoroscopy for identification of the catheter positions uh, and uh, measurements are made with uh, intracardiac uh, ultrasound or with TEE. Here we have a, 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 a CT image, preoperative workup with measurements, position of the coronaries and so forth and determination of the axis that is optimal for visualization in the OR and then here you have uh, the insertion of uh, two views, here the echo, here the um, fluoroscopy with the uh, guide wire coming and the catheter being positioned for balloon dilatation. You have the usual um, pigtail catheter here. Here you can even see the lumen in the pigtail catheter. Then we have the balloon uh, dilatation of the valve. This is very easy to see, the, the balloon in the echo. And then we move forward with the valve. It's a sapient type valve in the position that was identified before. And the balloon is uh, inflated and the valve is unloaded in the same position as we planned before. And at the end, of course, you can uh, remove the balloon and uh, see the valve here, and you may also recognize the valve here. It's not always so easy, this is the same in a series, it's not always so easy to see the valve uh, where it is on the balloon, so we have developed a technique where we uh, inflate the balloon partially at 0.5 uh, atmospheres. Interestingly enough, the stent doesn't open under this condition, and you can also see the valve uh, in here with these uh, balloon, ballooning on, on both sides of the crimped stent valve here in the experimental setting. This is the balloon inflated, this is the valve, so you know exactly where the valve is when you want to position it and you, uh, you unload the valve at the target site uh, as it is supposed to be. We have done more than a hundred cases like that. Um, we have also looked at this similar uh, um, approach for the mitral valve here on the bench. Uh, Dr. Yu has done this. Uh, the heart is connected to several grafts, uh, including one to the left uh, atrium so that the valve can be brought in from the left side in transparietal fashion. There is uh, some noise in the water bath, which is not the case in the clinical setting, but you may see, recognize that there is a valve implanted here. Here you can see the leaflets. Uh, and here the valve is open. Of course, in the water bath, it's easy to see this with uh, endoscopy. And there is another technique that I think has deserves some merit for the future. <coughs> this is quite an old study already. We did this in about the year, in early year 2000. Uh, it was designed to work within the heart without stopping it, working hard. Uh, call it off-pump, off uh, working hard work. We used uh, uh, virtual ports here, the whole thing underwater, and worked within the heart. And you can recognize here the forceps, and you can grab the leaflets, and so forth. And this, I think, is a technique that has potential with uh, 3D or 4D echo. In Professor Del Nido's group, there is Dr. Vasiliev. He's working on this type of... Uh, procedure and I think uh, uh, it has potential because it's something uh, either robotic or uh, telemanipulators that uh, are designed for this purpose, uh, things that you cannot do uh, with the beating heart. There are mainly two issues here. One is instrumentation. There, one problem is, for instance, to bring the needles in there, uh, but there are uh, needles that can be straightened and curved in the body now. And the other thing is, of course, visualization, and the Boston team has very elegant solutions for that, but I'm sure he will tell us this uh, himself one day. So, to conclude, uh, I, I was a TE, they helped to show where to puncture, they helped to identify guide wire position, it allows for targets identification, it provides precise measurements, uh, it can document unloading, fixation of the devices, it can, helps to assess performance, and it contributes to corrections. Thank you very much for your attention.
Um, can I ask you, can you use this device to image an, a coronary anastomosis? To imit? To image? Image. To yes, there, there are, so for instance for the uh, intravascular ultrasound there are three sizes of probes. One is uh, for peripheral, I think it's an 8 French, then there is one for the aorta, it's a 12 French, and there is a coronary design. And it's the, the same technique that cardiologists use. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. It's just bigger for surgeons. Yes. <coughs> Tell us, Lodi, you can now do <coughs> the really uh, TVAR without uh, using X-ray equipment. No, we use X-ray, but no injection of contrast, no, mm -hmm. ang no angiography. interesting way I think things are going and um, I challenged my colleagues on the executive committee for partner trial, particularly interventional cardiologists, that we should be doing the, the percutaneous procedures now on the valves with echo and I think it's very feasible that we're going to be able to do that and we've already done some procedures basically just with echo. So with that in th uh, thought in mind and doing percutaneous valves, maybe even as an outpatient, uh, looked into two things. One is that in the United States, if a patient's not in hospital for two nights, it's known as a two midnight rule, the hospital doesn't get paid for the procedure. That's the one issue. The other thing is, I looked into whether you could do sort of like a CAT scan of the whole body with multiple echo probes, and uh, it is feasible, but the problem is that all of the patents are sewn up by Philips, basically, for most mm -hmm. of these in 3D imaging. So to go into that space, they obviously have plans to something like that down the road. And the big advantage of, of the CAT scan is you don't have radiation and you can get flow dynamics. Yeah, I, I mean, there is also, I didn't show that, but there is also 3D, 3D reconstruction possibilities based, based on pullback. Uh, but this is offline procedures, but you can uh, analyze the situation before and afterwards, or you take the time to do it uh, during the procedure. I think uh, it, it is underused. I know that Ted Dietrich and his team in, in Arizona, they do all the stent grafts with uh, intervascular ultrasound, and we do that, but otherwise I do not know too many groups who rely on that.